For the last part of my talk on diagnostic accuracy, I'm going to talk about how we can compare different tests. In comparing tests, we may be in the situation where we've got a choice between two alternative tests to diagnose a particular disease. One test may have better sensitivity, but the other may have better specificity. So we have the dilemma, which do we choose? And it's not clear whether in any particular situation we're better off with a high sensitivity or with a high specificity. So we might consider which test is more likely to produce a conclusive result for our type of patients. And that depends on the likelihood ratio for each outcome because we know that the likelihood ratio will change the odds. But it also depends how often that particular outcome occurs because it's no good having one outcome that will change the odds by a large amount but it hardly ever occurs and most of the time we don't change the odds by very much at all which means we have a likelihood ratio close to one. So what you really need is a single number for each test that measures its value. Such uh, um, a number is the diagnostic value index which was suggested by my ex-colleague Jim Lloyd in a paper that we wrote together in 1998. So you see I'm not entirely impartial in suggesting this diagnostic value index but it is a number that's out there in the peer-reviewed literature and although I'm afraid it's not been greatly taken up by other authors it is one that I have seen shown to be useful and so I thought it useful to finish this talk by explaining what it is so that you may wish to use it yourself. The diagnostic value index is a number that measures how helpful a test is at producing a diagnosis. It's calculated from a sum of what Jim called the usefulness of each result weighted by the probability of obtaining that result. The usefulness of a result I, uh, by which I mean I might be a positive result or a negative result or any other outcome of the test, the usefulness of that particular result UI is the absolute value of the likelihood ratio for that result minus one divided by the likelihood ratio of that result plus one where absolute value means we ignore any negative sign and always call the number positive regardless of what its sign is. Now the first thing to note about this is that we already know that the likelihood ratio is independent of prevalence and so the likelihood ratio minus one divided by the likelihood ratio plus one will also be independent of prevalence. So this is uh, truly a number that tells us something about the test rather than, than about the population that we're looking at. So why did Jim choose such a funny number? Well you will remember that likelihood ratio um, of one is of no help to us because it doesn't change the odds whereas a small or a large likelihood ratio is useful to us. So if you take a small likelihood ratio in this equation like likelihood ratio of zero then you would have minus one over plus one because we ignore the sign that's equal to one so it has a usefulness of one. On the other hand if the likelihood ratio itself is one then we've got one minus one over one plus one which is naught over two which is zero whereas if the likelihood ratio is large um, then we get approximately one in the brackets and the usefulness is once again one. So we see we have just what we want. We have something which gives a usefulness of zero whenever the likelihood ratio is close to one but a usefulness of one whether the likelihood ratio is small or large both of which are useful in obtaining a conclusive result. The other thing is the probability of obtaining that result. So suppose the probability of obtaining the result i, that is a positive or a negative result, is pi, which clearly depends on the prevalence in the population. Then Jim defi de defined the diagnostic value like this. He said the log to the base 10 of the diagnostic value is the sum over i, that is the sum over all the possible results of the probability of that result multiplied by the usefulness of that result. The reason for including the log in this definition is merely to get something with a reasonable range.
So let's apply the diagnostic value to our beard test that we've looked at before as an example. The diagnostic value does depend to some extent on the prevalence of the disease, so let's take a typical prevalence of 0.5. We've already seen for this test that the likelihood ratio for a positive result is 9 and for a negative result is 0.8. Now remember the usefulness was defined as the likelihood ratio minus 1 divided by the likelihood ratio plus 1. So that's 8 over 10, which is 0 0.8. We also need to know the probability of getting this result, and we get it in 10 out of 100 of our cases. So the probability is 0.1. When it comes to a negative test result, we've already seen that the likelihood ratio is 0 0.8. The usefulness is defined as the likelihood ratio minus 1 divided by the likelihood ratio plus 1. So that's 0 0.8 minus 1, which is minus 0 0.2 over 1.8, which is minus 0.11, but we take the absolute value, so we ignore the sign, and that gives 0 0.11. The probability of that result is 90 out of 100, which is 0 0.9. So remember, the log of the diagnostic value was defined of, as the sum of the usefulness multiplied by the probability. So for the positive test result, it's 0.8 multiplied by 0 0.1. For the negative test result, it's 0 0.11 times 0 0.9. And if you add those up, that comes to 0 0.18. So the log of the diagnostic value is 0 0.18, which means the diagnostic value is 10 to the power of 0 0.18, which is 1.5. So that's the diagnostic value of the beard test. What other tests might we want to compare it with? Well, obviously the other test in this situation is the height test. So let's do the same thing for the height test. We've got three possible outcomes here. We have already seen the likelihood ratio for a result of less than 165 centimetres is 0.12. If you work out the usefulness of that with likelihood ratio minus 1 over likelihood ratio plus 1, it comes to 0.78. And the probability of that is 28 over 100, which is 0.28. For the middle result of 165 to 175 centimetres, we already calculated the likelihood ratio of being 0.8. The usefulness of that comes out to be 0.11, and its probability is 39 over 100, which is 0.39. And the final result of more than 175 centimetres has a likelihood ratio of 10, so the usefulness is 10 minus 1 over 10 plus 1, 9 over 11, which is 0.82, and its probability is 33 over 100, which is 0.33. So to get the diagnostic value, we take the 0.78 times 0 0.28 plus 0 0.11 times 0 0.39 plus 0 0.82 times 0 0.33 and add all those up that comes to 0.53. That's the log of the diagnostic value so the diagnostic value is 10 to the power of 0.53 which is 3.4. If you remember the beard test had a diagnostic value of 1.5 so on these grounds the height test is better than the beard test it is more often useful in giving a conclusive result. So there we have one number, a diagnostic value for each test, which allows us to assess which is the better test in this particular case. The results might be different for different prevalence because the prevalence does affect the uh, probabilities we put into this equation, but it doesn't have too much of a dramatic effect unless the prevalence ch becomes very small or very large. So there I've shown a diagnostic index which might or might not be useful to in the future and that wraps up my lecture on diagnostic accuracy. Thank you for watching it.